Naked Nation, welcome to part two of becoming a better trader or a trader in general. So if you haven't watched part one, make sure to go to our playlist down below and definitely check out part one if you haven't started on part one. But now we're kind of moving into part two and we're going to be talking about, I would say, the second most important part is bank roll management. And bankroll management is really kind of all dependent on you as a person. It also kind of depends on win rate. It depends on a lot of things. But I'm, I'm going to keep going back to the poker world because poker and the trading world, they're very much more mm, aligned than you think. So looking at, looking at becoming a better trader, becoming a better investor, it always boils down to your risk management. If you don't have good risk management, you're probably going to get fucked. So let's kind of look into this together. And an important key, and I always kind of, I've shown this on Twitch stream before, but this is, this is really important. Before we even talk about any type of bankroll management strategies, theories, whatever, you really have to look at it this way. If, if, this, if this is you, you need to think about it this way. If, if this sounds like you, I'll start with $2,000, but I can just re-upload whenever I need to. You're setting yourself up for failure. You're pretty much saying, I'm okay to lose. And it's never okay to lose. Okay, let's get that out of our mindset. Step number one, let's get that really out of our mindset. It's never okay to lose. So that's number one, all right? Number two, um, you need to be able to set aside your investing portfolio and your trading portfolio. So what a lot of people will do will be like, I have... 60,000 pesos in crypto, okay? And they will be like, I will put 2K to the trade. And if I lose it, I'll put more, which is already failing what we said, step number one. But let's, let's continue a little bit. Then another thing that can happen is people will be like, you know what? I'll just keep, I've, you know what? I lost 58 out of six, 60K. I'll just upload another two and another two. And then suddenly two becomes six, which becomes 10, which becomes 20, and you've lost, and suddenly you've lost one third of your entire trading thing, trading portfolio. And now you're thinking about, oh my God, how am I gonna make it back? Why didn't I just not trade? Why didn't I just sit on my money? Why did I fucking try to start trading? Which comes back to our part number one in our last video. If you can't turn 10 into 100, you'll turn 20,000 into zero. No problem. Uh, I've seen it, done it, and I've seen it happen again and again and over and again, so it's, it's just gonna keep happening, right? So number one, Set a limit for yourself. What's your limit? What are you truly willing to take from your investment portfolio and put it into your trading portfolio? And the moment you do that, you are never, ever, ever, ever allowed to take money from your investment portfolio and put it in. If you put 10K into trading and you know you think you're a good trader because you know you've ran up a couple thousand from or like 10 to 100 or 10 to 1,000 or whatever you've done, I mean, you don't really have to start with 10, but like, you know, I always say start with a low number and see how you can work up your way up on the, on your win percentages. But, you know, what, what you really want to learn from this is being able to really separate investment to trading because a lot of people don't do that and they get fucked. So step number one, step number two, really understand, um, when you when you do start trading that obviously when you start moving up from ten dollars to a thousand dollar trades it's obviously going to be a little bit different psychologically but you really need to be able to that's why you need to be able to trade for i don't know 90 days 120 days however long it takes you to kind of get a good feeling about yourself because it's all about you and you know i can't tell you how you're going to be able to trade when in reality you need to be able to figure that out like how are you how is your win rate how do you feel about moving up levels Maybe it's better that you, you know, and when it comes back to that trading diary, maybe it's better that you, you're better at trading at $200 ranges than you are at trading $1,000 ranges for, for bets, margin bets, right? So that's, that's kind of a key, key focus here too as well, that you need to be able to understand psychologically how high can you go. Sometimes there's some poker players that'll never be able to play high stakes poker because they just can't mentally deal with, you know, putting down, you know, huge amounts of money on a bet because you know they they they, f they just physically can't they can't handle it um so that's also something that you gotta kind of keep in mind in regards to um how much how much you have there right um sorry i'm, I'm just kind of putting in a trade right now sorry about that guys 
Now I can focus back in. Um, so that's step number one, understanding your bankroll management. Kind of what are you willing to part with? And at the beginning, the beginning number is $10, $100, very, very low amount um, that you're willing to put in as a bankroll. But I want to kind of go back into the poker bankroll type thing and how not necessarily the mindset you want to have going into crypto with this, with, with, what's what I'm about to show you. But it's some similar along the lines of the line, right? If you go to a cash game, which is, you know, you buy into a poker table. If if you wanted to bot play it at a poker table that had one dollar, two dollar bets uh, as the blinds, you would need twenty thousand dollars. Why do you need why do you want twenty thousand dollars? Well it's relatively simple because if you happen to whatchamacallit, lose two hundred dollars out of twenty thousand, well you're not gonna be emotionally affected by that. If you lose two thousand out of twenty thousand, you're gonna be like, eh, don't feel too good about that, right? So it's all, trading, investing, gambling is all about how do you feel about it, right? And not, and I'm not necessarily telling you you need to have a hundred times of your bet because that's essentially the theory here behind poker. If you're buying is two hundred, have hundred times of your bet, you'll never really, you'll never go broke. And well, I mean, you could go broke if you're a really bad poker player. But you shouldn't go broke because you have so many, you know, you can deal with the variance. But that's why it exists in poker because you need to be able to deal with the variance. And in and in and in in um, in trading, you don't really have that, right? There isn't like you know the ace on the river or the, your opponent has pocket aces and you have pocket kings. You know that's just bad luck. Sometimes shit just happens, right? And shit does happen in, in crypto. Don't get don't get it twisted. Sometimes shit does happen. I mean, that's why it's also important to have good bankroll management because if you're putting down 50% of your bankroll on one bet and you lose 50% because, you know, the market, CZ tweeted something, Elon Musk tweeted something, a nuclear bomb was dropped, you know, no, you don't want to lose You don't want to lose that, right? It's all about, it's a 365, 365 days a year game, not a, you know, a day game that, you know, today you make it or break it, right? So do keep that in mind, right? Um... Going back to the bankroll management, there's all, I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's ways to kind of look at it too, right? You know, and I would almost say that if you're kind of playing, it, it really depends to you how you want to do it. I just treat it like as a, as a poker thing, not necessarily like as a cash game because cash game is high variance, but something like tournaments where you like, you want to have 60 times what your bet is. Right? If you have 60 times what your bet is, or at least 20, 20, 40 times what your bet is, I'm not saying that this is the perfect thing, rule way to go. This is just what I look at when I do these things. Maybe maybe that's a better way for you to do these things because maybe maybe you won't lose as much money that way, right? So look about look at it that way. You don't always have to do it. Some people say you know you can bet anywhere between three to seven percent of your bankroll. Or you know one or th or even as low as one to seven percent of your bankroll, and maybe go ten percent if you're like really confident in a trade or something like that, right? And all that also kind of depends your, your 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 sizing of your positions. It, it depends on, you know, are you confident in the trade? Are you what what kind of trade strategy you're applying? You know, I apply a type of a martingale strategy to my to my betting. Not exactly a full martingale strategy. Um, but if you kind of look up Martingale on Wikipedia, you can kind of understand what it is. But long story short, if you lose a bet, um, you pretty much double up your next bet, right? That's kind of the theory behind it. Now, I don't play it exactly like that, and maybe on another video we'll go over what I what I do. But like that's that's Martingale, right? You know, but that that'd be more of a blackjack mindset. You know, you put a hundred dollars on blackjack, you lose a hundred. Okay, I'm gonna put two. You know. Not necessarily the mindset you want to go with, but sim like that's what I do. I'm not telling you that's what you should do, but that's kind of like what I do, where I similarly adjust. If I get stop loss on a trade, I don't get liquidated. I, I get stop loss. Then my next trade increases by X size to a make up for the loss a little bit, and b, um, you know, because I know I can hit a trade, you know, two out of you know have a seventy percent win rate. I can hit these trades relatively soon. So if I if I have a seventy percent win rate, I should be able to win long term. Right, that's that's kind of the theory behind Martingale. Now, is that something you should implore? Maybe, maybe not. You know, there's a Martingale system which you can read on Investopedia yourselves. Um, you can check it out how it works. You can Google YouTube. You know, Martingale strategies. There's many types of Martingale strategies. I'm not going to get into it very hard. I just want to kind of give you a scope of what is actually available for you to use. Right. So 
If you like it, look into it. If not, there's multiple ways you can type in bankroll management onto YouTube, uh, trading, investing, and then they, you know, other people can kind of give you a, a guide or maybe something that you will like. You know, every different strokes for every folk, right? So maybe for me it's Martingale, maybe for you it isn't Martingale, right? Um, so that's that's kind of the key basis what I kind of wanted to go over here today, guys. Number one. Um, and next time I should probably, I should bring up the notepad for next time. But number one, know your limit, stay within it. Number two, don't have that losing mentality of, oh, I can just rebuy back in. No, we don't. The moment, you, if you set aside 2000 bucks, that's the 2000 bucks that you're allowed to use. Treat it as your lifeline. That is the last $2,000 you ever have <coughs> or whatever number that you're willing to quote unquote gamble, right? So that is also going to be a key thing here for you guys. Number three, figure out what is a good bet size for you once you get to that level of what is your win rate and based off of your win rate, how much could you potentially make with that win rate based off of the bet sizing that you have that you currently have. Are you okay moving up in bet sizes? Do you lose more when you bet sizes? And that kind of coincides with the diary thing. And I think that's about it. I, I kind of want to keep these videos short, but not too, not too short, but not too long. So if you like it, let me know. Put your comments down below. If you didn't like something, let me know. Maybe I can extrapolate more on it. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Naked Nation, still on vacation. I'll see you guys summer Monday, Monday, March 6th. Take care. Brush your hair. And I'll see you on the next one.